welcome to Plaid for Women TV, your go-to resource for the business of life. Whether the CEO of your home or your own business, women struggle with the same challenges. At Plaid TV, we discuss real-life issues affecting real women and offer solutions to help you achieve your goals, get connected, and be heard. Together, we will change the world. Let's do this. No mean girls allowed. Hey, welcome everybody to Plaid for Women TV. I'm Siobhan Palmer. In this video, we're talking about pelvic floor health. My guest is Dr. Marie Warner. She's the Assistant Professor of Physical Therapy at the University of North Texas Health Science Center in Fort Worth, Texas. Dr. Warner, welcome. Very interested in this topic. So first of all, for our late audience, describe where your pelvic floor is on the body. Okay, so the pelvic floor is a basket of muscles at the very bottom part of your pelvis. So you can imagine your pelvis, which is right here, um, the front part of your pelvis, um, it's so the pelvis is kind of like a bony ring. The very front part, there's the pubic symphysis. The very back, there's an SI joint. Um, and so the muscles are at the very bottom. So they go from, they have attachments on the pubic symphysis all the way back to the tailbone or the coccyx. From one ilium all the way to the other, so the entire bottom part is being enclosed. So it's just this basket of muscles that we refer to as the pelvic floor or levator ani. Okay. Now, I know that one of the common uh, complaints that patients have, uh, they complain about incontinence relative to this part of their body. Why does that happen? So incontinence can happen for a variety of different reasons. A couple that are pretty common um, can be from weakness. And so that can occur due to childbirth or um, pregnancy um, as as well as um, trauma. So trauma to the area, whether it be from a significant tear during delivery or from surgery or something of that nature. Could trauma also include like a sexual assault of some sort or? Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, with incontinence, obviously this impacts men and women, but specifically toward women, it's either urinary incontinence or it can also be fecal, is that correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. And then um, what do you do? What type of treatment do you do for this type of uh, problem in the pelvic floor? So if it's specific to muscle weakness, now they can have incontinence for another reason as well. Like if the muscles are non-relaxing or in spasm, um, that can contribute to incontinence as well. Um, but specifically for a weakness issue, um, if if it um, just helping them isolate the pelvic floor, um, so that they so that way they can um, exert you know and showing them exercises um, and then incorporating um, the lower abdominal muscles, the transverse abdominis, in addition to the diaphragm um, into a variety of different of exercises. So um, let me ask you, what are the um, ages of your patients that you're seeing with this type of issue? It can really vary. It can be anything from a teenager who does gymnastics to the 60, 70 year old that doesn't want to be in poise pads anymore. Yeah, and they're that's interesting because I think most people have this misperception this, this is a problem really focused on older women, but that's not the case at all, it sounds like. Mm -mm. Okay, interesting. So when you have um, these particular exercises that you give your patients, if that for some reason does not alleviate the problem, what are some other options? Well, I mean, they, there are a variety of different things. I mean, they can do anything from, you know, their surgery is an option, but I mean, if you can avoid it by doing conservative intervention, that's always what the a preferred. lot of it, yeah, exactly. You bet. Now again, urinary incontinence in the pelvic floor region is not exclusive to women. Men also have these issues as well, right? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of men post prostatectomy, um, which is a common intervention for um, prostate cancer. A lot of men undergo that type of surgery. Um, and that is just due to, um, yeah, it can be a weakness issue there. And so by helping them strengthen the pelvic floor, um, it can help decrease their symptoms um, and reduce the amount of time that they have leakage for. You know, this is an area that people don't like to talk about, obviously, but how do you alleviate your patient's concerns about coming in due to embarrassment or something like that? Because you need to get over that. This is an area that impacts their life on a daily basis. Right. A lot of times they will not, they won't inform their physician of this for years until it finally gets to a point 
where they're sick of it and they're tired of it and they want help. So once they communicate that with their physician and their, ref their physician refers them to me, they're pretty much to the point where they want to do something about it. You bet, because it's impacting their quality of life. Mm -hmm. Now tell me the uh, exercises that you give to your patients. How do they differ from what are uh, commonly called Kegels, right? So Kegels are pelvic floor exercises. Um, we just tend to get away from Kegels. Um, but it's the same type of thing, being uh, specifically teaching them how to strengthen the pelvic floor with the pelvic floor exercises, ensuring that they're not getting other muscle groups that they may feel is the pelvic floor or the levator ani. Um, because sometimes they'll activate more of their lower abdominal muscles or their thighs or their glutes instead of getting their pelvic floor specifically. And then teaching them how to incorporate that into functional movements. I'm um, incorporating their lower abdominal muscles and their diaphragm. Um, and so all of those things together can help lead to decrease in symptoms and improve in functional and quality of life. Yeah, and I love the conservative approach, like you said. Are there any issues if somebody has got health issues, if they're not as uh, flexible, say a younger patient versus somebody in their 60s and 70s that are not as mobile or ambulatory, can you still treat them with this issue mm -hmm. through exercise in these? Okay. Yeah, I've been very successful. Um, I mean, yes. So you basically customize a program depending on where the person is in their health and so forth. Mm -hmm. Dr. Warner, this is great information. I really appreciate it. Why don't you tell our audience how they can get a hold of you to get more information or book an appointment with you? Great. So to get a hold of me, you can email me, um, marie.warner, spelled W-O-E-R-N-E-R, -E at U-N-T-H-S-C dot E-D-U, or you can call the clinic at 817-735-5400. Dr. Warner, thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Siobhan Palmer with Plaid for Women TV. See you next time. Thanks for watching Plaid TV. See you next time.